The Four Inner Voices of Anxiety. So at the core of anxiety, depression, anger, and all these negative emotions is negative self-talk. And self-talk is the way that you talk to yourself. You can think of it as the voice in your head that's kind of narrating your thoughts and helping you to understand the world. And while this process may help you to solve some problems in life, these inner voices can cause you great distress. Now we could go on about how thoughts don't represent who you are. Thoughts just pop into existence and then they fade back into nothingness. And that there's no reason to let them affect you emotionally because they don't represent anything other than a passing thought. But we'll save that discussion for another video. For this one, I want to focus on the four inner voices that cause anxiety. Now, what makes these four inner voices so powerful is that although everything they say to you is completely irrational, in the context of your mind, they sound like truth. And so let's just get started with the first inner voice that causes anxiety. And this one's probably the most obvious, but this inner voice is called the worrier. The worrier creates anxiety by imagining the worst case scenarios. It's constantly daydreaming, trying to figure out how it could turn the current situation into a catastrophe. The worrier's tendencies include anticipating the worst, overestimating the odds of something bad or embarrassing happening, and creating grandiose images of potential failure or catastrophe. The worrier's favorite expression is what if. What if I fail? What if I embarrass myself? What if something goes wrong? What if I get fired? What if I crash my car? What if my spouse dies? There's no end to what the worrier can dream up as long as it has the phrase, what if. And maybe you can already see that in the phrase, what if, there is no truth. It's pure speculation. It finds any way it can to show you how the situation could go terribly wrong. I remember for myself, I used to have a tendency to, if I heard a loud noise behind me, I would immediately think that it was some type of violent intruder, like a mass shooter or a burglar or, you know, just some person who is there to commit violence. Now, over time, I was able to recognize this tendency in it, and it gradually faded away. But this is the worrier at work. It's taking small details of the situation and finding ways to present them to you as if it's a catastrophe. All this does is it just hypes you up for no reason, and it's not based in reality. But let's move on to the second inner voice that causes anxiety. This one is called the critic. So the critic is the part of you that's constantly judging you and judging your behavior. The critic points out your flaws and limitations whenever possible. It likes to compare you with others and usually sees others favorably while it sees you unfavorably. It tends to ignore your positive qualities and emphasizes your weaknesses. The critic's favorite expressions are, what a disappointment you are, that was stupid, you're an idiot, and a lot of phrases that include the word you. So even though it's in your head talking to yourself, you think in these phrases of you are blank. You know, you're talking to yourself saying you are this. And it's almost like you're talking to another person, but you're talking to yourself and you're putting yourself down. So anytime you catch your thoughts, including the phrase you, and it's as if you're talking to another person, but you're talking to yourself, and you're being really harsh and judgmental, this is the critic. Now let's move on to the third inner voice that causes anxiety. This is the victim. So the victim is the part of you that feels hopeless or helpless. It feels like it has no control over the events and is purely at the mercy of either random chance or other people's decisions. Some of the victim's favorite expressions are, I can't, I'll never be able to, it's impossible. I may as well give up now. What's the point of even trying? I've already tried everything and nothing worked. These are the thoughts of the victim. And again, these are thoughts that are not based in truth. You know, when you think a phrase like, I've already tried everything and nothing worked, it's just not truthful that you've already tried everything. You know, everything is one of these broad words that, you know, it seems like it means something, but you could never actually have everything. 
And while there may be situations where you don't have much control over the outcome, you don't have to feel like a victim of the situation. You always have control, at least of your own actions and your own feelings. But now we'll move on to the fourth and final inner voice of anxiety. This is the perfectionist. The perfectionist promotes chronic stress and burnout. The perfectionist is a close cousin to the critic, but while the critic's main goal is just to put you down, the perfectionist's goal is to push you to do better. The perfectionist is the hard-driving part of you that wants you to be better, but its main mistake is to have the tendency to base your self-worth on your external achievements. So when you don't perform perfectly, you see yourself as a failure. One of the perfectionist's favorite expressions is, I should. I should have done better. I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have gotten a 100 on the test. You know, the perfectionist says, I should so much that it practically shoulds all over itself. So those are the four inner voices that cause anxiety. We've got the worrier, the critic, the victim, and the perfectionist. Now, if you want to learn some ways to overcome these inner voices and to really improve your self-talk and feel a whole lot happier, I've got a free guide that you may want to check out. It's called the Headfulness Guide. It's going to teach you a four-step strategy I call the Burr Strategy. It stands for Breathe, Relax, Review, and Repeat. And it's a great strategy to help you relieve stress in the short term and the long term. And the best part about it is it's totally free. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter and I'll send it to you right away. You can go download it at headfulness.com guide. I'll put the link down in the description. If you found this video helpful, make sure to click that subscribe button. And if you really liked it, click that thumbs up too. Go download the Headfulness Guide. It's totally free. I'll put the link down in the description, headfulness.com guide. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.